Thanks to our readers this morning. We appreciate your taking time out of your schedule to bring us all together this morning once again. Uh, thank you, Captain Roberts. Uh, First Lady and I are very pleased to welcome every morning. Uh, some of you may recall the first prayer breakfast I had the honor of <coughs> leaving. It, uh, I see Mike Alden over here, it snowed eight inches. <laughs> so we got a meteorologist as the MC for the next <laughs> So we thank you for providing your, your support and counsel as to the dates and times of low pressure uh, systems. And whatnot. <clears throat> for more than 50 years now, uh, this annual gathering has brought together Missourians to ask for God's guidance and blessings at the start of our legislative session. The months ahead will be filled with both great challenges and with great opportunities as they are each and every year and have been for 49 years before this. But it's not hard to look back at this last year as a time when our state was tested as never before. 2011 was a year that from Tarkio to Carothersville, from Warrensburg to Sunset Hills, from Joplin to Cahoka, every ounce of resolve and every prayer was needed in the face of blizzards, floods, drought, and tornadoes. And once again, we were reminded of the power of faith and the power of prayer, two spiritual forces that have helped bring our country and our state through turbulent times in the past and will always do so. That was especially true on the night of May 22nd and in the days, weeks, and months that have followed. Even before the wail of the tornado sirens was fading in Joplin and Duquesne, the people there began a monumental challenge of recovering and rebuilding. They were quickly joined by people who came from every part of our state, from every corner of our nation, to be part of the miracle taking place. Time and again, we saw clear de the clear demonstration of people of faith putting that faith in action. Geographical boundaries held no meaning as a person's neighbor became not only someone down the block, but someone from 100 miles away or 1,000 miles away and sometimes even more. This resilience of Missourians, an inner core of faith-inspired strength, has been matched with an outpouring of generosity that came from within those communities and from the people throughout America and, quite frankly, around the world. Hope has grown and thrived in a place where, because of terrible calamity and suffering, some might have thought hope would be gone. But as St. Paul reminded us in the words that we heard a little earlier, with faith, there's not a, that great a distance between suffering and hope. From the Apostle Paul. We boast in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us. It certainly says something about the character of the people of Missouri who preserved, persevered through a time of great tragedy. And how hope has sprung out of the character developed through suffering and endurance. There's a well-known photo taken just a few days after the tornado that showed how quickly hope came to that city. The letters that were left on the sign outside of what remained of Joplin High School were changed by a little graffiti. So you may have seen a picture. The Joplin High School sign had all the letters except two taken off. And someone took duct tape and put an H and an E so that Joplin High School was renamed Hope High School. This image could not have sent a clearer message throughout that town and to the world. I'm very pleased that one of the leaders in Joplin who best demonstrated that city's abiding spirit of hope is here this morning with us at the prayer breakfast, and I'd ask that you welcome the superintendent of schools of Joplin, Dr. C.J. Hall.
Now, in less than three months, after 54% of the district students were left without a school, 60% of their families had damaged facilities, every school in Joplin opened on time on August 17th. One of which, the high <laughs> One was a retrofitted mall that was built in 54 days. And as CJ said, we eagled it up. Uh, but more importantly than that, 90, over 94% of the kids were there that first day of school. I mean, more coming back as the year goes on. Uh, CJ, thanks for what you're doing and continue making Job a Miracle reality. We are tremendous leader. Now, in the coming months of this session, there undoubtedly will be disagreements on how and what is best for the people of our state. But as we pray for guidance, we also should resolve to work together in a spirit of fellowship that does not question each other's sincerity in wanting to do what is right. We know there will be a constant need to call upon God's strength and help during those weeks and months ahead. Yet even in the face of those challenges, we can take comfort from those words out of the book of Joshua. God told Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Those are words that give us comfort and give us strength for the challenges that lie ahead. Now, at the end of the program today, there will be students from the Governor's Student Leadership Forum at the doors who will be collecting a free will offering for the Samaritan Center here in Jefferson City. This is just one of the faith-based organizations in our state that helps us share our many blessings with others, and your generosity today as they hold up the plates would be tremendously appreciated. This food bank, this multi-denominational food bank that Marilyn DeFeo runs and has run for years is an unbelievable service for this region of the state, and I would ask you to be generous as you leave today to help that long-standing, strong, multi-dimensional food availability for people in need. Now, the communities of faith have been a big part of Joplin's recovery. Their work started right after the tornado hit because they know that spiritual healing is essential to physical healing. Three days after the tornado, I met with a group of about 100 clergy at Missouri Southern University which got missed, so it was the place we had all our meetings. Many had lost members of their congregation, had church buildings, and more than a few of them were badly damaged, and in some cases, completely blown away. That included Father Justin Monahan, the pastor of St. Mary's, who was saved by taking shelter in the rectory bathtub, even as the sanctuary and school were destroyed above him. Our pastor Aaron Brown, over at St. Paul's, where the church was left in ruins. With me that day was Colonel Gary Gilmore, the Joint Force Chaplain from the Missouri National Guard. In his role with the Guard, Gary has been at the scene of many natural disasters in Missouri, helping during those times of need. But I'm sure he would agree that this was something on a scale that had never been seen in our state. These people of faith had been working around the clock, like so many people were doing. But they also were working to give physical and spiritual comfort to others at a time when they themselves, the faith leaders of that community, were dealing with losses themselves. But there was not a word of complaint about their own situations. Only a common theme from those faith leaders. How can we continue to help? There was a real consensus among the group that a gathering of the community was needed, a gathering that would remember those who were lost and the pain the community was feeling, but also would be a clear statement that through faith and determination, Joplin would rise again. Over the next three days, a memorial service took shape to bring the Joplin area community together and to show the nation, quite frankly, to show the world the strength of the people of that area. During the planning, several names were mentioned to help lead the service. 
Father Monahan and Pastor Brown, who lost so much when the tornado hit their churches, but were also bedrocks of strength for others, were natural choices for having a role in the service. There was another name that kept coming up to lead the service, though. That was Pastor Randy Garris of College Heights Christian. Now, when I met Randy, I met in the back room, everybody was dirty, nobody had showered, nobody had shaved. It was quite, quite a scene. Uh, as we met for a moment after meeting with all of the ministers to pray for the future. It was evident instantly why he garnered so much respect among his peers in the community. If you saw the memorial service, it took place only a week afterwards. That memorial service was the next Sunday, three days later, memorial service seen by the world. You could see that he is doing what he has been called to do. That day we heard inspirational words from Father Monahan and Pastor Brown. Pastor Garris also sounded the exact tone of both comfort and hope that was needed right there, right then. I was honored to be a fellow speaker with him at the service, and I think our other speaker, the President of the United States, was as well. We were honored to be on stage with Randy Garris. Since that time, Randy has continued to lead his congregation in caring for both the physical and spiritual needs of the people of Joplin. He has been a great help to us in identifying the needs of those who lost so much. I've heard his heartfelt and powerful prayers many times. Many times at Joplin when he was at events with us, when we were working together, we've asked him to begin and end our meetings with the voice of the Lord. And that's why I was very pleased to ask him to be our keynote speaker at this prayer breakfast this morning. Now, George Ann and I were delighted to host Randy and his wife Julie last night at the governor's mansion, and they are truly wonderful, caring people of faith. Please join me in welcoming our guest speaker, Pastor Randy Garrett. 